All right, guys. Hi, everybody. I'm apparently the captain of the ship today. Jason is having some difficulties um, getting his internet going and Circus is not feeling his best. So um, I'm gonna try to navigate all the stuff. If you have questions and wanna chat, this is a very uh, open uh, dialogue here. So it's my understanding that we're starting at point 125. Put in the chat if you're having trouble seeing this. Let me see, I should probably just like put that up there. Okay. Okay, so part 125, general operating requirements and prohibitions. Oh, there we go, we got Klimek. Jason, are you on? I am here. Okay, you probably know that section we left off on, do you? I am just trying to find the exact part that we left off on. Okay. Um, it looks like we are around page 221, but let me see if I can find the exact, yeah, right at the bottom of 221. So I think, yeah, that was, uh, Keep going. I think once we hit subdivision seven, I think that's where we left off is like starting up on maybe. No, we did we did HVAC 222. We're pretty deep in this. Yeah. I think maybe we should start off at the top of uh 223. Oh, okay. I think that's probably about where we we were right after HVAC yeah so okay. we can start there all right so um description of manufacturers requirements for inspection and maintenance and mitigation systems and description of how licensee will ensure proper operation and energy efficient operations, including but not limited to practices to limit and or improve odor control. Okay, wait, so let's just go back quickly. So we're talking here about like what needs to be part of the energy plans, right? Is that what yes. this is? Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to recap it, Jason? So people know like where we're. Yeah, so let me, uh, let me go back to the beginning of this stuff. I, I think we should probably, this is a good section. Let's restart the section, should we? Or actually, it's kind of long. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's why we stopped yeah. is because as we looked at it, we're like, oh my God. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, this is dealing with the environment, the energy and environmental plan. And as we said last time, this is going to be something that goes in with your application the way we read it. This is not something in the provisional portion. Yeah, this is going to be this and the community impact plan slash like social equity plan are like the, really the two things that you're going to move forward on. Right. And so that's why these, you know, it's incredibly dense material. Why we ended up stopping half, you know, th halfway through this last week and didn't continue on is because it, there's a lot of requirements and, you know, I, I don't know that we need to go read through them again, because again, we are a few pages deep into them, but maybe just a quick like recap though. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it the things that people are going to have to deal with, and, and obviously this is going to be particularly relevant for growers, probably processors to a little bit lesser extent. And then, it, but it, it appears to be that even dispensaries and things like that are going to have to submit an energy plan unless they get exempted. But the way it reads right now, it says applicants. So, um, you know, this is dealing with things like your carbon footprint, your sustainable energy usage, um, what type of lighting you're going to be limited to. So if you're in the smaller tiers, you only have to meet the 1.9 micro, what is it, micro moles per, per joule um photon efficiency 
Whereas if you go up into the higher uh, license tiers, then you have to hit the, the higher um, PPE of 2.2 micromoles per joule. Um, you're also, you know, they want to see, for example, plans that incorporate staggered peaks into lighting. So you're not, you know, not everybody has their 12 hours on between, you know, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. or something like that. Like they're going to want to see that you're staggering that type of thing. Um, your environmental controls and odor mitigations, the dehumidification equipment. And I specifically remember this one because I had no idea what the unit is, but I, I think it's liters per kilowatt hour. Um, you know, and you're going to need a dehumidifier, particularly, you know, if you're doing greenhouse or something like that, you're absolutely. Um, oh, and the other thing that we had pointed out that you really need to think about is that other than micro business tier one and tier two, and this is right at the bottom of page 222 on my copy, okay. um, Romanet three, yep, right there, um, is you can't use combustible fossil fuel on site. So you need to think about how, if you're going for you know a tier three or above license, how you're going to power your entire operation with something that is not fossil fuels. And in, in New York, um, you know, natural gas is typically the way houses are heated. I mean, that's going to be so hard. Is it, it, it really like, is. And is it like, is it just like some has to be different or is it all has to be non-fossil fuel? I mean, it says not involved, yeah. are required to utilize technologies for heating and cooling that do not involve. So, I mean, I take that to mean any type of HVAC needs to be non-fossil fuel. So you're throwing in a geothermal system. And if it's ground source, I mean, just on a residential house, that could be 50 grand. So, you know, I, I don't know what that is for a tier three grow, but certainly uh, it's, a, it's a huge capital invest, investment. So, you know, when you're doing a business plan, you really have to think about how that's going to impact what effectively is your startup cost. Yep. Uh, and then I think we can kind of, I think we, we might've left off right around here. So Romanet four on the next page. Um, okay. Yeah. Why don't you kick us off? Yeah. An HVAC and odor inspection and maintenance plan shall include, but not be limited to a description of manufacturer's requirements for inspection and maintenance of mitigation systems and description of how the licensee will ensure proper operation and energy efficient operations, including, but not limited to, Practices to limit or improve odor control and air filtration. Odors from all enclosed and enclosable grow operations and all on-site processing and storage shall be mitigated to minimize objectionable impacts off-site. Mitigation technology includes active carbon filtration, vapor phase systems, or other technology approved by the office. And heating systems that exhaust to the atmosphere and require an air permit or air facility registration with the New York State Depart Department of Environmental Conservation pursuant to 6NYCRR 201 shall obtain, an shall obtain an issued permit or registration before construction of the facility starts. Construction is defined in part 102-2.1 part 201-2.1b9 as the initiation of physical on-site construction activities which are of a permanent nature excluding site clearing and excavation. Such activities include but are not limited to installation of building supports and foundations, lying underground pipe work and constructions of permanent storage structures, a plan for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and reliance on fossil fuels including but not limited to pursuant to section 72 of the climate leadership and community protection act a demonstration that the operations will not be inconsistent with or will interfere with the attainment of the statewide greenhouse gas emissions limited limits established in article 75 of the environmental conservation law a fossil fuel reduction plan for motor vehicle use in the course of business that includes annual estimates of miles like are they looking for like electric vehicles here i mean yeah, I mean, clearly this has delivery and I guess dispensary that does delivery right in its target. So it's not just distribution, obviously. And yeah, I'm sure, um, you know, uh, cultivators too that are using any kind of gas powered equipment. This is hitting basically every licensed here. 
um, or license type, I should say. Um, yeah, and it kind of looks like they, they want maybe at the very least hybrids, but yeah, EVs. That's crazy. Um, yep. Uh, annual estimates of miles driven, fuel consumed and type of vehicles driven along with the strategies to reduce fuel consumptions or travel efficiency in the future and practices to mitigate the impact of carbon dioxide used in the cultivation and production of cannabis and cannabis products. Ecological regeneration practices, including but not limited to those in section 123.4 of this title, water conservation and use, including but not limited to, a sustainable water use and conservation plan that addresses water sources, quality, and use, environmental controls to ensure that wastewater runoff is in accordance with state and federal regulations, including but not limited to DEC state pollutant discharge elimination solution permitting, and practices to limit or improve water usage, including plans to engage in water recapture or recycling, and waste management, recycling, and disposal included but not limited to a waste management program demonstrating best practices to minimize waste generation, maximize reuse and recycling, and how waste materials will be labeled, separated, and either picked up or delivered to a recycling service provider in accordance with local waste rules and all applicable laws and regulations. A description of the applicant's or licensee's strategy to measure, track, and record the applicant's or licensee's performance and the execution of the plan that identifies qualitative and quantitative metrics and includes frequency of tracking such metrics and any other information as determined by the office. Licensees shall submit their energy and environmental plan in a form and manner as required by the office upon request. The board may take a licensee's energy and environmental plans and actual performance implementing the plans into consideration for purposes including but not limited to license renewal, incentive programs, and certifications. 125.2, storage, security and storage of cannabis. General requirements. A licensee shall implement sufficient security measures to deter diversion, theft, or loss of cannabis and cannabis products, theft or loss of cash, prevent unauthorized entrance into areas containing cannabis or cannabis products, and to ensure the safety of the licensee's employees and the general public. Unless otherwise approved by the office, such security measures taken by the licensee shall include but not be limited to the following positively identifying the individuals who are not employees of the facility and are seeking access to the facility or who are transporting cannabis or cannabis products to limit access solely to individuals 21 years of age or older, implementing and maintaining a security plan, which shall include a description of the security measures to prevent unauthorized access to the licensed premises by unauthorized persons and protect the physical safety of employees, deter theft or loss of cannabis and cannabis products, prevent loitering and ensure that only individuals engaging in activities expressly or by necessary implication permitted by the cannabis law in this chapter are allowed to remain on the premises of the licensee, lock all perimeter doors and windows, and provide for safe, safe cash storage and handling and transportation of cash to financial institutions and securing all entrances to the licensed facilities to prevent unauthorized access ensuring that both the inside and the outside perimeter of the licensed facility are sufficiently illuminated to facilitate surveillance, maintain trees, bushes, and other foliage outside of the licensed premises so as to prevent a person from concealing themselves from sight, any other requirements provided in the section and as determined by the office. Wait, so just so I know, is there not a fence necessary? So it doesn't appear that there is a fence requirement, at least not in this section. Um, yeah. I do also think it's interesting that they require like lighting specifically to facilitate surveillance when we definitely have night vision cameras. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's true. like yeah. um, light pollution is definitely a thing. Um, so if there's an alternate means, I mean, I get with employee safety and parking lots, but once the building is like empty, I don't know, night vision cameras would seem to be okay, but apparently not. Um, okay, storage. Cannabis and cannabis products shall be stored in a secure, locked, safe vault or other approved equipment or location within the licensed premises to prevent diversion, theft, or loss, and in such a manner as to protect against physical, chemical, and microbial contamination and deterioration of the cannabis and cannabis products as follows. 
All safes, vaults, or any other approved equipment or areas used for the cultivation, processing, and or storage of cannabis or cannabis products shall be securely locked and protected from entry except for the actual time required to remove or replace cannabis and cannabis products. Keys shall not be left in the locks or stored or placed in a location accessible to individuals who are not authorized to access cannabis or cannabis products. Security measures as such as combination numbers, passwords, or biometric security systems shall not be accessible to individuals other than those specifically authorized to access cannabis or cannabis products. A separate secure area shall be designated for temporary storage of any cannabis or cannabis product that requires disposal. Cannabis and cannabis products shall be kept out of plain sight and not visible from public place outside of the licensed premises without the use of binoculars, optical aids, or aircraft. And access to cannabis and cannabis product storage areas and areas within the licensed facilities where security equipment and recording recordings are stored shall be restricted to authorized licensee personnel, employees of author of the office or its authorized representatives, emergency personnel. Hold on. <laughs> Can you uh, take? Yeah. Emergency personnel responding to an emergency and other individuals authorized by the licensee for the sole purpose of maintaining the operations of the facility. Security system. All facilities operated by a licensee where cannabis or cannabis products are stored or handled shall have a security system to prevent and detect diversion, theft, or loss utilizing commercial grade equipment, which shall at a minimum include a, perim a perimeter alarm that communicates with an internal uh, designee and a third party commercial central monitoring station when intrusion is detected. Video camera surveillance in all areas that may contain cannabis or cannabis products, all surveillance areas or rooms and at all points of entry and exit and in any parking lot, which shall be appropriate for normal lighting conditions of the area under surveillance. Video camera surveillance shall meet the following additional requirements. Video cameras shall be directed at all safes, vaults, sales areas, and any other areas where cannabis and cannabis product as applicable is cultivated, harvested, processed, prepared, stored, handled, transferred, or sold for the purpose of securing cash. Video cameras shall be positioned at all entry and exit points and at each point of sale area to allow for capture of clear and certain identification of any person entering or exiting the facility at the point of sale. Video cameras shall have the ability to immediately produce a clear color still, from, still photo from any camera image. Video recording shall allow for the exporting of still images in an industry standard image format. Exported video shall have the ability to be archived in a proprietary format that ensures authentication of the video and guarantees that no altercation of the recorded image has taken place. Exported video shall also have the ability to be saved in an industry standard file format that can be played on a standard computer operating system. Video cameras shall include a date and time stamp embedded on all recordings. The date and time shall be synchronized and correctly measured in accordance with the United States National Institute standards and technology standards and shall not significantly obscure the picture. Uh, video cameras shall produce continuous recordings during hours of operation any time that cannabis or cannabis product is handled and motion activated recording at all other times from all video cameras, which the licensee shall make available via remote access or login credentials for immediate viewing by the office or their representative upon request. And you'll have to retain those recordings for at least 60 days. Licensees shall make an unaltered copy of video camera recordings to the office upon request. If a licensee is aware of pending criminal, civil, or administrative investigation or legal proceeding for which a recording may contain relevant information, the licensee shall retain an unaltered copy of the recording until the investigation or proceeding is closed or the entity conducting the investigation or proceeding notifies the licensee it's not necessary to retain the recording in an event for no less than 60 days. The physical media or storage device on which the surveillance recordings are, are stored shall be secured in a manner to protect the recording from tampering or theft. One thing yep. I yeah. think we should just go back and emphasize is the uh, Romanet 6 up there where it says that the licensee shall make available via remote access or login credentials for immediate viewing by the office. You know, it seems to me that like if the office asks, they want to be able to have live access to videos, which I think is, I mean, it's pretty unique. I don't know of too many other business types where a governmental agency can just hop onto your camera system without your knowledge. I mean, if they give, if you give them, if you're giving access, them that record, yeah, I know if you give them the username and password and they're like just hopping on. Yeah. I mean, and it, I, I really don't understand the requirement when they have the right to demand you hand over a copy of the video and you have to retain it for 60 days. Like, I don't really understand that requirement. 
So I, I just think that that's something that, you know, people should take note of is that they, they get that access if they want it. You want to retake over again? Yeah, sure. Um, so are we on three? Yeah. Okay. A failure notification system that provides an audible text or visual notification of any failure in the security system. The failure notification system shall provide an alert to the licensee's designated representatives within five minutes of the failure, either by telephone, email, or text message. The ability for the security alarms and video surveillance systems to remain operational during a power outage for a minimum of eight hours, limiting access to any surveillance areas and keeping all on-site surveillance rooms locked, a licensee shall make available to the office or offer office's authorized representatives upon request a current list of authorized employees who have access to any surveillance room, keeping all locks, storage, and security. I mean, it's just funny because it's like the amount of things that you have to like alert the, well, I mean, in this case, it's just make available, but like the office is just having you alert them with so many things in the daily course of business. It's just so impractical. Yeah. And, and what's like the portal, is it going to be like an actual portal? Is it just literally going to be like emailing like notifications at OCM? Um, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like who's, are you talking to somebody? Is it just like, so they have it via yeah, the email, they have the docs on it. I don't know. Yeah, that'll be interesting because right now it's it's very difficult to get in touch with OCM and have them confirm that they've received something. Um, so hopefully that gets a little better. All right. Keeping all locks, storage, and security equipment in full operating order and shall test and inspect such equipment at regular intervals, not to exceed 30 calendar days from the previous inspection and test. Records of security tests shall be maintained for five years and made available to the office upon request. And outdoor areas designated for cannabis cultivation shall implement the video surveillance requirements set forth in this part, which shall be operating for no less than three than the three week period preceding a harvest, as well as all times while drying, curing, storing, or disposing of cannabis. To ensure the outdoor areas are not readily accessible to unauthorized individuals and to prevent the detection or diversion, to prevent detection and diversion theft or loss of cannabis cultivation security measures shall include the following for outdoor cultivators based on their tier as determined by the office a perimeter ah, so here's your fencing a perimeter security fence or perimeter breach detection service oh not absolutely in need of a fence um unless Perim so like am I, I guess it's like what a, an uh, electric fence or like what's a perimeter breach detection um event? my guess is probably like you know almost motion sensors or light beams that if you cross the beam, it'll trigger like a notification that somebody crossed. Although I imagine that would be totally susceptible to like animals <laughs> crossing yep. and like that. So um, you might be getting a lot of notifications uh, unless otherwise approved by the office designed to prevent unauthorized entry with signs notifying reserves that it is a limited access area. Fencing shall be constructed of metal or other similar, similarly secure material measure at least eight feet from the ground to the top, have support posts that are securely anchored, and meet the requirements of the relevant municipal code provisions. Use commercial grade non-residential locks, motion activated floodlights, which may face away from the canopy, and control point of access. Yeah, so that's hard, right? Because like it, it clearly indicates that like it has to be encompassing the entire area. Like it can't just be part of a greenhouse. It can't just be like you know, the front of your indoor, it has to have the secure boundary line. Yeah. I mean, if you were growing on, I think what's the maximum, if you were doing like a co-op, like 150,000 square feet outside, <laughs> you have to have a perimeter fence for 150,000. I know that's like, well, that's what they're dealing with now. Right. With the, I mean, AUCCs, a lot of them don't have security because it's not being checked up on, but outdoor, it's very difficult because they move plots. Like they'll mm -hmm. move you know, one, one, that section where they're growing to the next. And it's, it's not realistic, I think, to have to fence in five acres because they're growing on 150,000 square feet of it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, it, it, again, it's one of those capital costs that you're going to have to look at and factor in when you're. And we're talking about capital costs. Like, I mean, these are really, really high costs. Security is like, I, we did a quote for security just on one dispensary. And I think it was upwards of, you know, 150K, yeah. 100, 150K. And you're like, all right, well, that's a pretty big, you know, bucket 
bright to get going on. It's crazy to have the lights like that too. If animals set it off all night, you have lights coming on all night. That's not okay. Even if they don't face the canopy. Oh, chat is disabled. Oh, I'm sorry, Danielle. Let's see. I don't know why that's disabled. I was wondering why nobody was talking to me. <laughs> this is obviously my first time allowing this. Uh, Jason, do you know how to let chat back in? Uh, no, because I'm not the host. So I don't know. Sarkis, you son of a gun. <laughs> Sorry guys, if you have, just type it into Q&A, I guess. Um, unless I can figure out how to do that. Um, that's a good point though. Yeah, I mean, just, and hopefully you guys are sharing these comments with Candy because yeah, it's just impractical, I think for all these. Yeah, just like a light for when the point of access would be. Uh, if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a fence and you're, you have an animal crossing in, like that would just be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, Okay, employee and visitor identification. You want to keep going? Yep. Employees, visitors, and other persons at licensed premises, including persons engaged in the transportation of cannabis or cannabis products, shall be required to provide identification to the office or otherwise, or other authorized enforcement official upon request. All licensees and employees of the licensed premises shall be required to hold and properly display an identification badge issued by the licensee at all times while on the licensed premises or when engaged in the transportation of cannabis or cannabis products. The identification badge shall include at minimum the following information. The employee's first and last name, employee's photograph, licensee's legal name, and licensee's license number as issued by the office. Non-employee visitors to the licensed premises other than cannabis consumers shall be required to hold and properly display an identification badge issued by the licensee at all times while on the licensed premises. The licensee shall maintain a visitor log of all persons other than employees, cannabis consumers visiting a retail dispensary, permitted cannabis laboratories or laboratory sampling firms, emergency personnel responding to an emergency, or any other persons as determined by the office that shall be maintained by on the licensed premises for a period of five years and be made readily available to the office upon request. The log shall include the following information. The full name of each visitor, as well as the company and individual, the company the individual works for, entering the licensed premises, the time of the arrival, the time of the departure, and the purpose of the visit. Incident reporting. A licensee shall notice Notify the office in a manner prescribed by the office of any breach of security or other incident set forth in this section immediately, and in no instance more than 24 hours following discovery of the security breach or incident. So basically, call, call law enforcement, send a notification to OCM. That is, I guess, the uh, what you got to do. Uh, let's see. Notification to the office shall be provided for the following incidents. Discovery of inventory discrepancies, diversion, theft, or loss of any cannabis or cannabis product, any criminal action involving or occurring on or in the licensed premises, any suspicious act involving the cultivation process, distribution, or sale of cannabis or cannabis products by any person, unauthorized destruction of cannabis or cannabis products, any loss or unauthorized alteration of records related to cannabis or cannabis products, an alarm activation or any other event that requires response by public safety personnel, including but not limited to local law enforcement, police and fire departments, public works or municipal sanitation departments, and municipal inspection services departments or security personnel privately engaged by the licensee. The failure of any security alarm system or surveillance or video surveillance due to the loss of electrical power or mechanical malfunction that is expected to last more than eight hours. A significant motor vehicle crash that occurs while transporting or delivering cannabis products that would require the filing of an accident report with the DMV, any other breach of security, and any other event that may compromise public health or safety. The licensee, the licensee shall, within 10 days of any incident in paragraph one of this to subdivision, submit an incident report to a, in a form and manner determined by the office, which details the circumstances of the incident, any corrective action that was taken, and confirmation that the appropriate law enforcement authorities were notified. All documentation related to an incident shall be maintained by a licensee for not less than five years or the duration of an open investigation, whichever is longer, and made available to the office and law enforcement authorities within their lawful jurisdiction upon request. Uh, let's see. All right. 125.3 employee requirements and obligations. 
licensees shall not employ anyone under the age of 18 years of age. Any employee 18 years of age or older, but under 21 of eight years of age may not have direct interaction with cannabis customers inside a licensed retail dispensary. Licensees shall use due diligence to ensure that all employees possess the necessary education and training for the duties they will be assigned. The act, omission, or failure of an agent, officer, representative, or other person acting for or employed by a licensee within the scope of their employment or position shall, in every case, be deemed the act, omission, or failure of the licensee. Responsible vendor training. Licensees shall provide all managers, employees, contractors, volunteers, or persons otherwise performing activities under the licensee's authorizations within 30 days of engagement at no cost to the recipient of responsible vendor training, which shall be made available in English and the primary language of all recipients. Hey, uh, Jason, Tyler Coakley asks, will there be a minimum or maximum of employees for micro business? I believe there is, right? I don't think so I, I think the only employee caps are on the delivery side of things. Oh, yeah, because remember we did a control find and the only time that they talked about 25 was in the delivery. Yeah, and if you're like one of the big companies doing like a construction project and you're using like union labor or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's only for delivery. So micro businesses hypothetically could be as big as- As you want. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all relative to how much square footage you have. I think they don't really necessarily know what like the business operations will look at for a micro to, to put a maximum employees for because you'll have access to all the licenses. So it really depends on how many you take versus how many you don't take. Mm -hmm. And whether you, you know, you're doing delivery and all that kind of stuff. Like there's so many variables because you don't like, you don't have to process. You could just grow and sell at retail. So yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Trainings shall happen during the employee's work hours and the licensee shall pay the employee their usual rate of pay while completing any required training. Licensees shall maintain an employee training manual, which shall be provided in a printed version to employees during responsible vendor training and made available at the licensee premises to employees, authorized personnel, and the office upon request. The employee training manual the employee training manual include <laughs> uh, employee guidelines and safety procedures, security protocols, including but not limited to the physical effects of cannabis on the human body based on the phytocannabinoids present and recognized signs of impairment, appropriate responses in the event of an overconsumption, risks of cannabis use and overuse, including cannabis use disorder, and public safety risk and legal consequences of operating any vehicle, including watercraft under the influence. A brief history of cannabis prohibition, legalization, and overcoming stigma. A basic overview of the powers and responsibilities of the office and the board. Additional information in accordance with this chapter, including but not limited to permitted cultivation techniques and cultivar varieties, permitted processing methods, safe storage, packaging, labeling, marketing, and advertising requirements, security and surveillance of licensed premises, emergency procedures, compliance with, and the operation of inventory tracking systems. Permitted investigation or inspection by the office and law enforcement authorities. Common violations resulting in license cancellation, suspension, revocation, and denial of, denial of a renewal, civil and criminal fees, fines, and penalties. Waste disposal, privacy and confidentiality. Licensee responsibility for activities occurring on the licensed premises under the operating plan, including for licensees authorized for retail activities, an explanation of how employees will monitor and prevent sales to consumers where there is a risk to the health or safety, underage or illegal sales of cannabis products, or any other criminal activity within the licensed premises, cannabis products, cannabis product information, including but not limited to serving size information, onset and duration of effects, method of administration, warnings, and information regarding secure storage and proper disposal of cannabis products, and consumer and patient privacy and confidentiality requirements, and for licensees authorized for processing activities, standard operating procedures for all staff involved in extracting, processing, and or manufacturing cannabis or cannabis products, including but not limited to training that is specific to the duties assigned and the, the safe operation of the equipment, machinery, solvents, gases, and systems to be utilized, and training on the hazards presented by the use of chemicals and solvents as described in the safety data sheet for each. 
safety data sheets shall be on site, maintained, and readily available to employees and to to the office upon request. For licensees authorized for cultivation, the training manual shall also include training on application of any chemicals or pesticides used in cultivation of cannabis. If extracting, best practices include, but not, limit, not limited to, safe extraction procedures and protocols and fire prevention and fire response. And if manufacturing edible products, best practices including, but not limited to, safe food handling training as specified by the Department of Agriculture and Markets safe food handling regulations. Record maintenance, prohibited purchases and practices, implicit bias training, relevant local ordinances, rules and regulations, and other areas of local, state, or federal regulations or training as determined by the office, and emergency operations, including notification to emergency personnel and shutdown procedures, information on how to access current laws, rules, and regulations, and any guidance or policy documents issued by the office, and a page for signing and dating documentation demonstrating each employee's attestation of completion of the training, which shall be made readily available to the office upon request. So one thing I would really like to see, so that there's some semblance of like continuity, is mm -hmm. for the office to put out a template plan. Because things like, uh, what is it? The, um, well, the physical effects of cannabis on the human body, a brief history of cannabis prohibition legalization overcoming stigma. I don't really know exactly what those are. So I guarantee that if you had licensees drafting those or those plans themselves, you'd have a different plan for every single one. And who knows what's compliant, what isn't, how much you need. Like it would really be to the benefit of every licensee for the office to release like hey, here's the minimum of what we're expecting. Yeah, I kind of thought we might see that more in like the annual report, you know, that they have to publish or at least something in regards to, I mean, this would be a situation where like guidance would really be helpful on like what we anticipate, you know, seeing as part of employee training handbooks and mm -hmm. everything like that to engage on, on cannabis analysis. Yeah, here's hoping that we we see that guidance. And, and those are things too that could potentially be done, you know, during the application process or while you're waiting to hear back from the office, things like that, so that you're kind of ready to hit the ground running. Um, mm -hmm. So it'd be nice if, if we could see those. Plus, I'm sure that the conditional licenses are going to need to, you know, implement all this stuff soon anyways. So, you know, it'd be good to get a head start on it. All right, picking back up. Licensees shall provide adequate supervision of staff, including trainees, by persons familiar with the standard operating procedures for the relevant roles and activities. Ensure all staff has demonstrated capability in the activities for which they are responsible, and ensure all staff is fully trained on all standard operating procedures, including but not limited to security and emergency procedures, and any procedures related to employee and public health and safety. Have policies and procedures for identifying training needs on an annual basis and providing ongoing training of personnel for a minimum of eight hours per year for each full-time employee. Licensees may provide their own training and develop training curriculum and materials provided that the training meets a minimum core curriculum standards as outlined in the section or contract with third parties pursuant to section 124.3 of this title provided training and education as outlined in the section or as mandated by the board. So, it kind of doesn't seem like they're intending on putting out templates, <laughs> but we can hope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All trainings required to be provided by licensees to all managers, employees, contractors, volunteers, or persons otherwise performing activities under a licensee's authorizations under this section or otherwise by the office shall be free of charge to the recipient. That's good. And one thing too is I keep seeing this volunteers, like, I just want to make clear to people that unless unless the business is a 501c3 or some other type of nonprofit, you can't volunteer. A for-profit company cannot have volunteers. That is a total violation of the labor law. So just keep that in mind, people. Definitely saw that in a lot of startups. Can't do it. Um, training verification. Licensees shall be able to demonstrate completion of responsible vendor training by each required person. Licensees shall keep records and shall make such records available upon request by the office 
as it relates to training containing the following information, including but not limited to trainee's name, trainee's date of hire, and the name and description of all training satisfactorily completed by the trainee, and failure to keep the records described in this section or failure to make such records available upon request by the office may result in disciplinary action, including but not limited to civil penalties, license can cancellation, suspension, revocation, denial of renewal, or civil or criminal fines, fees, and penalties. Worker health and safety standards. The licensee shall comply with all federal, state, and local laws and regulations related to worker training, safety, health, and pay. The licensee shall establish, maintain, and comply with a written, alcohol-free, drug-free, and smoke-free workplace policy. All employees involved in the production, cultivation, and distribution of cannabis and cannabis products shall receive safety and hygiene training as determined by the office. Signed consent forms shall be obtained by the licensee for, from all employees involved in the application of chemicals as part of their work activities. Safety data sheets shall be maintained consistent with OSHA standards pursuant to 29 CFR section 1910.1200 hazard communication. The licensee shall maintain an electronic record of any chemicals on site that are used to conduct operations, such as chemicals for cleaning equipment or to perform extraction. Personal protective equipment shall be assigned, consistent with OSHA standards, to all employees involved in the cultivation and processing of cannabis and cannabis products as applicable. Such personal protective equipment shall be in good working order as specified by the manufacturer. Employees working with chemicals or materials that require the use of respirators consistent with OSHA standards shall be trained in their proper use and respirators shall be serviced and tagged to manufacturer specifications. Licensees shall install informational signs that provide clear instructions for material handling, equipment operation, and general safety information for all operations. Licensee shall install warning signs in English and other appropriate languages for the employees of the licensee that shall be posted in all potential hazard areas as a public protective, public health protective measure. Licensees involved in the cultivation and processing of cannabis and cannabis products shall have emergency spill management procedures. Emergency signage shall be posted in all work areas. Sanitary facility equipment and handling standards. The licensee shall be responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of all facilities, containers, tools, contacts, surfaces, and equipment used in the cultivation, processing, distribution, transportation, storage, and sale of cannabis and cannabis products, and shall have floors, walls, and ceilings constructed in such a manner that may be adequate, adequately kept clean and in good repair. Utilize containers, tools, contact surfaces, and equipment that are designed and of such material and workmanship as to be adequately cleanable and designed, maintained, operated, and arranged as to protect against the physical, chemical, and microbial contamination and deterioration of cannabis and cannabis products. Use containers that are food grade or of a similar standard as approved by the office for the storage of cannabis and cannabis products. Containers shall be clean and good repair and suitable for the established use. Maintain all facilities, areas, containers, tools, contact surfaces, and equipment in a clean and sanitary condition. Cleaning and sanitary Sanitizing shall be conducted as frequently as necessary to protect against contamination using a sanitizing agent registered by the United States Environmental Protection Agency in accordance with the label instructions. Maintain record of routine cleaning and sanitization of all facilities, containers, tools, contact surfaces, and equipment, and make all records readily available to the office upon request. Provide adequate safety lighting in all cultivation, processing, distribution, storage, and sale areas, as well as all areas where equipment, tools, containers, or contact services are cleaned. Provide sufficient space on the premises for placement of equipment and storage of materials as is necessary for the maintenance of sanitary operations. Utilize appropriate environmental monitoring for temperature, ventilation, and humidity where cannabis or cannabis products are handled or stored so as to protect cannabis and cannabis products against physical, chemical, and microbial contamination and deterioration. Maintain records of pest management activities, including, but not limited to, a map of all traps, types, and coding numbering system for the traps, if applicable, a record of routine trap maintenance, and a record of any evidence of animal or insect presence, including body parts, hair, or feces in cannabis or cannabis product handling areas. Properly remove and dispose of litter and waste so as to minimize the development of odor and minimize the potential of the waste attracting and harboring pests. Store poisonous or toxic chemical 
materials, insecticides, rodenticides, detergents, sanitizers, caustic acids, and other related cleaning compounds in separate areas from cannabis or cannabis products in pro prominently and distinctly labeled containers and establish precautions to protect cannabis, cannabis products, non-cannabis components, contact surfaces, packaging materials, and any other equipment or materials that are used in process processing against any potential contamination by microorganisms or foreign substances. Sanitary handling procedures. All licensees and their employees shall handle cannabis in a sanitary manner and comply with the general sanitary requirements, including but not limited to maintaining adequate personal cleanliness and washing and sanitizing hands thoroughly in an adequate washing area before starting work, after each visit to the restroom, after handling contaminated material, eating, or at any other time when hands may become soiled or contaminated. Licensees shall ensure that all workers have access to hand washing and toilet facilities on the licensed premises and shall maintain such facilities in a clean and sanitary condition, maintaining records of regular cleaning and sanitizing of such facilities. Hand washing facilities on the licensed premises shall be furnished with running water at a suitable temperature and shall be located in the licensed premises in any cultivation or processing areas and where good sanitary practices require employees to wash and sanitize their hands. Signage shall be displayed in toilet facilities to remind workers to wash and sanitize hands. Sanitary areas in the section shall be marked in the licensee's site plan. Plumbing shall be of adequate size and design and adequately installed and maintained to carry sufficient quantities of water to required locations throughout the premises of the licensed entity. Plumbing shall be properly shall properly remove sewage and li liquid disposable waste from the premises of the licensed entity. There should be no cross contamination between the potable and wastewater plumbing. Inventory and tracking. Licensees shall track all physical inventory of cannabis in an electronic real-time inventory tracking system as determined by the office. This inventory tracking sh system shall be capable of showing any cannabis that has been released for sale to allow for a total recall of all cannabis if necessary. By the way, if, if everybody hasn't heard, it is biotrack. It is not metric. Mm -hmm. the, licensee, er, the licensee shall Accurately record all inventory in the inventory tracking system, including identification of base materials used to create each batch or lot of cannabis or cannabis products, maintain in real time at minimum the following information in the inventory tracking system, batch or lot unique identifiers for cannabis and cannabis products, a complete cannabis and cannabis product inventory, as well as inventory adjustments from cultivation, processing, transportation, transport, laboratory testing, distribution, waste, sale, disposal, product return, or any other activity. The complete inventory shall include, as applicable, all seeds, plant tissue, seedlings, clones, plants, lots of usable cannabis or trim, leaves, other plant material, cannabis extract, cannabis products, and cannabis waste. For processors, any additives or ingredients used in the processing cannabis, all samples sent to an independent testing laboratory, any sample of unused portion of a sample returned to a licensee, and the quality assurance test results in accordance with Part 130 of this title. All samples provided to another licensee as authorized by the office, samples provided to the office or their designee for quality assurance compliance review, and any other information as determined by the office. Utilize an inventory tracking system that is capable of integrating with the office seed to sale tracking system of record in a form and manner as determined by the office. Physically tag or label all cannabis plant, cannabis, cannabis products, cannabis extract, seeds, plant, tissue, clone lots, seedlings, immature cannabis plants, and cannabis waste with a unique identifier generated by the inventory tracking system. Utilize a standard of measurement that is supported by the inventory tracking system to track all cannabis and cannabis products. A scale used to weigh product prior to entry into the inventory tracking system shall be approved for commercial use in accordance with New York State Bureau of Weights and Measures. Track at minimum the following data elements for each activity performed within the cannabis with cannabis and cannabis products. The type of cannabis or cannabis products, the weight, volume, or count of the cannabis or cannabis products, the date of activity, the lot unique identifier assigned to the cannabis or cannabis products, the identification of the employee performing the action in the inventory tracking system, the type of activity being performed, and then any other information as determined by the office. 
review the licensees, authorized users, and remove any users who are no longer authorized to enter information into the inventory tracking system and record cultivation activities as follows. Record the following cultivation activities in the inventory tracking system within three calendar days of occurrence. Planting of an immature cannabis plant lot, moving an immature cannabis plants to a designated canopy, flowering of an individual plant, or application of a plant tag to an immature cannabis plant, destroying or disposing of an immature or mature cannabis plant, and harvesting of a mature cannabis plant or portion thereof. Report in the inventory tracking system for each harvested plant or portion thereof or harvested batch. The wet weight of each harvested plant or portion thereof, which shall be obtained by the licensee immediately after harvest. The weight of cannabis waste associated with each harvest batch. The unique name of the harvest batch. The initiating date of, of the harvest. For purposes of this section, the initiating date of the harvest shall be the month, day, and year the first mature cannabis plants in the harvest batch were cut, picked, or removed from the soil or other growing media. And the package and repackaging of cannabis or cannabis products. Loss of system access. If at any point a licensee loses access to the inventory tracking system for any reason, the licensee shall keep and maintain comprehensive records detailing all inventory tracking activities that were conducted during the loss of access. Once access is restored, all inventory tracking activities that occurred during the loss of access shall be entered into the inventory tracking system. A licensee shall document when access to the system was lost and when it was, when it was restored. A licensee shall not initiate transport for, receive, transfer, or deliver any cannabis or cannabis products to another licensed entity until such time as access is restored and all information is recorded into the inventory tracking system. Within three days of restored access, enter all licensed cannabis activity that occurred during the loss of access in the inventory tracking system. Document the loss for document the cause for loss of access, as well as the dates and times when the loss of access occurred, document the dates and times for when access to the inventory tracking system was restored. And just remember guys, like this seems like a lot, but it's all, you know, it's all part of a program. So once you have access to BioTrack, I mean, don't get me wrong, there'll be a lot of pitfalls and problems with BioTrack in your day-to-day -day scenario, but this isn't stuff that like you're writing down in a, in a journal and like making sure you have all these documentation. Everybody is everybody in your your team typically has access to BioTrack um, with authorization. So when you're handling something like that's all part of employee trainings and manuals is to make sure that everybody is is understanding how this works and how how often they have to document within the the parameters of BioTrack. So it seems like a like a lot but it is all part of the software so mm -hmm. hold on let me just see how much let's see how i'd say let's go to 128.8 okay okay sounds good yeah initial inventory a licensee shall conduct an initial comprehensive inventory of all cannabis and cannabis products in the possession of the licensee including cannabis available for cultivation cannabis products for sale immature and mature cannabis plants and unusable cannabis as authorized at the authorized premises on the date the cannabis licensee first engages in the cultivation, processing, distribution, or sale of cannabis. Inventory shall include damaged, defective, expired, or adulterated cannabis awaiting disposal, including the name, the quantity, and the reason for which the cannabis licensee is maintaining the cannabis. Hold on, we got a question here. Two questions. Type them out, Dave King. Actually, you can type them and Jason will keep going. Yes. <laughs> the initial comprehensive inventory shall be reported to the office utilizing the inventory tracking system. Licensees shall establish inventory controls and procedures and conduct comprehensive inventories of cannabis and cannabis products, which shall include the following. Maintaining real-time inventory tracking. Let's see. Um, conducting a monthly inventory audit of all cannabis and cannabis products. Conducting an annual inventory audit at least once every year from the date of the previous inventory and recording at minimum the following in the seed to sale system or inventory management. Training. And don't forget, this is going to happen, obviously, because you're going to have to track like in cultivation if you're getting rid of half your product or you still have 50% left, like they're really going to be harping on how much uh, how much poundage is, is left for purposes of of you know demand and supply in, in New York State. So 
it's going to be very, I think, imperative that you're on top of your inventory audits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The names and signatures of, of employees who conduct the inventory audit, the date of the inventory audit, summary of inventory findings, and any other information requested by the office. A licensee, upon becoming aware of discrepancies identified during an inventory audit, shall notify the office no later than 24 hours after discovery of the event in a manner prescribed by the office. A licensee, as applicable, shall maintain records identifying the source of each ingredient used in the cultivation processing of cannabis. Records identifying the source of each ingredient shall include the date of receipt of the ingredient, the vendor's name and address, the name of the ingredient and the vendor's license, registration, or other operating identification number as applicable, the grade and quantity of the ingredient, and any other information determined by the office. Question. Okay. All right. Sure. Yeah. Would missing a date to report an infraction three days, one month, be cause for suspension of license? I believe they said it can be. I think it's the whole parade of horribles are on the table. Suspension, revocation, cancellation, fines. I think technically all of them are on the table, but my guess I think is- they're going to give you opportunity to cure though, because if, yes. they're, if they're slapping your hand with a, a suspension of license every time you do a failure to report, nobody's going to be- nobody's gonna My be guess operating. is like, you know, the first time something like that, like maybe you would get a fine. They're not going to jump to- we're going to revoke your license. But if it was for something serious, like you tried to hide something from them, that could warrant further intervention. So it's probably going to be on a very case-by-case -case basis what they determine the penalty, if any, will be. So I think we're probably only going to have one more of these. We got about 20-something pages left. I'm just going to go scroll down to the very end. Sorry for anybody who's like, at least you're giving me a stroke. Um, yeah, I mean... Section yeah, 131 I mean, is not even like a section. Yeah, right. like this is just, these are just sites. So like really we're just going to, you know, 280 basically. Um, so, you know, we got about another 23-ish pages left. Um, I think we'll definitely wrap it up. If you guys do have full questions, uh, if it doesn't take the full time next time, make sure you bring them so that we can look at the, if you have any questions from the regs in general, we can, we can help address them next week. Yes. And hopefully Zach will be well enough to join us again. He was feeling a little under the weather. So hopefully he'll be here Thursday for the wrap up. Uh, yep. But we're getting close to the end guys. Yep. We so it's all uh, <laughs> moving slow, but not too slow. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. Talk to you guys soon. Okay. Let me figure out how to cancel this bad boy. How do I get out of here? Oh, end it. Okay.